Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players and featuring Miriam Wolf as Lydia Darrow. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail Lydia Dara, heroine of the American Revolution. Our story is entitled A Message for the General and is based on an incident in the life of Lydia Dara heroine of the American Revolution. This is the story of a woman caught between her religious teachings and her desire to save her country in an hour of need. After this important message, our first act curtain will rise. Before this exciting story begins, a story about a courageous American woman of the past, here are a few words about the American women of the present, women who are now serving their country in the United States Army and United States Air Force. They are helping to write new pages in America's history during one of the country's most critical periods. You can join these women by volunteering in the WAC, Women's Army Corps, or in the WAF, Women in the Air Force. Do your part in keeping America strong. Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. And now, with Miriam Wolf in the role of Lydia Dara, your Army and your Air Force present the Proudly We Hail production, A Message for the General. I doubt not that war is evil in the sight of God, but a woman must do what she can to help when her country is in danger. Lydia Dara's country, then 13 colonies struggling to win independence, was in danger. Our story opens in December 1777 in Philadelphia, which was occupied by skilled professional troops under General Sir William Howe. General George Washington's army, ill-fed, ill-clothed, and largely ignorant of the skills of war, was encamped in the snow at White Marsh, eight miles from William Penn's city of brotherly love. For the colonies, the picture looked dark. And among the peace-loving Quaker people of Philadelphia, hearts were strained with torn loyalties, and times were hard. Well, Lydia, you managed to feed us well in spite of the occupation. <laughs> I never cease to thank God that he gave me the wit to see your cleverness as well as your pretty face. Oh, John, he gave you a ready tongue, surely. <laughs> you would have me thinking I'm still as young and pretty as the day we wed and these three great boys to shame me of such thoughts. <laughs> no. Instead, I must be thinking of all the work there is to be done this day. Now, have you a word for the children before you leave for the shop? <clears throat> be thankful for each new day, sons, and fill it to the brim with industry and loving kindness. David, do your work in your horn book. Oh, I have, Father. I can spell the lesson backward. Beware of pride, my son. It is a sin that leads to anger. If you know the lesson perfectly, then help Timothy. Yes, Father. Jonathan, you have grieved me and your mother, playing at soldier games. Have you anything to say? No, except... Father, may I go and join General Washington's army? My son. Jonathan. You know it is against the friend's beliefs to fight. One must not resist evil with evil. Jonathan, even though you are the eldest, you're not yet 15. War is not for little boys, my son. Little boys? Mother, I... That's enough, my son. That will do. Now get to your chores, and when you are finished, carry your mother's basket to market for her. If you do all your duties, you'll have no time to think of war. But... No but... buts, my son. Oh, yes, father. May I come to the print shop this afternoon and help you set type? Yes, that you may do. Now, let us ask God's blessing on this day. And 
And later that same day, Lydia Dara, escorted by her son Jonathan, joined her neighbors and friends in the marketplace. Good morning, Mr. Grace. And good morning to you, Mr. Stara. I'm glad I had a plump turkey left for you. Oh? General Howe's aide cleaned out my entire stall yesterday. If I had not kept this bird at home, he wouldn't be here now. Shh, there are two Hessians coming. Cover the basket, Jonathan. I, uh, I think that is all now. Um, apples, chestnuts, salted fish. I thank you and good day. Um, Jonathan, we must go to the mill for flour. Well, Friedrich, a pretty face. Ah, yeah, yeah. What do you say that we join the lady? Uh, madam, uh, an escort for you? Oh, thank you. But my son is escorting me, and I'm perfectly safe in the streets of Philadelphia. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, Mistress Dara is a respected Quaker lady. Do you not see her gray bonnet and gown? Surely you don't want to have trouble with the adjutant. The friends are known for their peacefulness, and the general has given orders that townspeople are not to be disturbed. Sir, no one addressed you. I am sure that this lady can appreciate the advantages of masculine company in these crowded, muddy streets. Yeah, Friedrich, perhaps he's right. Let's go. Don't you see the adjutant general's carriage approaches? Mr. Stella. Oh. The adjutant general's compliments, madam. Why, yes, uh, I am Mistress Dara. I was told I might find you here. The adjutant would like to see you, madam. Will you accompany me to his quarters? Oh, yes, certainly. Come, Jonathan. Allow me, madam. Ah, Mistress Dara, come in. However, the boy must wait outside. Oh, very well. Uh, wait for me outside, Jonathan, while I speak with the general. Yes, mother. Be seated, won't you? Thank you. Was that your son, madam? Oh, yes, my, my eldest. What is it you wish, sir? I am told you belong to the Society of Friends, and as such you and your family take no part in this uprising. Is that true, madam? It is true. The friends do not believe in war and do not take up arms in violence. It is well for our cause that you are William Penn settled here. You quite misunderstand what his intention was. Ah, well, no matter, no matter. Understand you have a commodious house, Mistress Dara, with a private chamber to let... Yes. Pray, may I beg the use of it this evening? I require a meeting place with absolute quiet and privacy. Why, well, I suppose I may let it to you. Oh, what are the terms? A pound for the evening, fire and candles to be ready at seven o'clock. Your family must all retire to their beds, and the utmost silence must be kept about my visit. No one must know. Can you keep these terms? I give you my word that no one but me will see you enter or depart. That's extremely important. If I see or hear anything of any other member of the family, the bargain is dissolved. And no money will be paid. Everything will be ready as you ask at seven. Mother? Yes, my son. What did he want? Who, oh, sir? Oh, the adjutant general. Yes. Well, I, well, I cannot tell you, Jonathan. It is a private matter. Oh, but... Mother, surely you've not made a bargain with a fat-faced redcoat. Jonathan, Jonathan, do you forget your father's words and mine? We are not at war. We, we are friends. The British are children of God, the same as we. Well, then why are they taking our cities? I'm at war, and I will be, as long as General Washington has an army. Hold the candle so I can see your face, madam. Is everything in readiness? As I promised you. Then show us to the chamber, please. Come in. Oh, I beg you, gentlemen, be quiet. My, my husband is in the kitchen. It's this way. Here. Here it is. Thank you. Now give me the key to the chamber, madam. And please retire to your own room. You are to remain within your chamber until I knock at your door before departing. I will let the others in myself. Very well. Oh, John, I, I'm very tired. It's been an eventful day. Will you pardon me to retire to my room? Why, yes, my dear. It has been a trying day. 
I too will retire very soon. First I'll look in on the boys. Good night, John. Good night, my dear. Oh, at last they're asleep. <laughs> I had managed to quiet all my family, but I cannot quiet the trembling doubts in my own heart. This must be a meeting of fearful consequence to require such secrecy. Oh, come what may, I must try to learn what it means. <laughs> I suppose I could take off my shoes and down a night robe and pretend sleepwalking if I'm discovered listening at their door. There. There. Oh, no candle, I find my door without one. Quietly now. Oh, yes. Yes, here is the keyhole. Now if I can but hear over the pounding of my own heart. Gentlemen, now that we're all here, I begin. At last, gentlemen, we will end this period of inaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gentlemen, I've received confidential orders from General Howell. All troops are to march tomorrow evening to White Marsh. There we will attack General Washington's army and break the backbone of the revolution. Yeah. Yeah. There'll be no more Saratoga's to this oh, no, General Washington no won't have a chance if he isn't warned. Someone must warn him. This is the moment. Oh, I, I dare not trust this secret to anyone. I must think of a plan. Oh, now I must go to bed and pretend to be asleep. Mistress Dara. Mistress Dara. Open the door. Oh, oh good evening. Have you finished with your friends? You must have been very soundly asleep, madam. <laughs> yes. Yes, we've finished. Now we must leave. I, come on. I will show you the way. Here is your key, madam, and one pound in gold. Thank you for your courtesy. And sleep well. No, General. I will not sleep this night until I think of a way to warn General Washington. And so the curtain falls on the first act of our Proudly We Hail production, featuring Miriam Wolfe as Lydia Dara. After an important message, we'll be back with the second act of A Message for the General. Down through the years, women have always shared the burden of defense. Today, more than ever before, women are needed to help defend the cause of freedom. More than ever before, the United States Army and United States Air Force need young women in its expanding forces. You will enjoy the same pay, allowances, medical care, vacations, and opportunities for travel as the men in the services. So go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. Have a talk with a recruiting sergeant. He will help you decide how you can best serve your country. Volunteer for service in the WAC, Women's Army Corps, or the WAF, Women in the Air Force. Do it now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with Miriam Wolf in the role of Lydia Dara, we present the second act of A Message for the General. Early, Lydia. Oh. Is anything wrong? Oh, John, I, I, I've just been to the storeroom to find we're out of flour, and I must bake today. I, I'll have to go to the mill and get some right away. But the mill is at Frankfurt, outside the line. Yes, yes, I, I must just get a pass. Well, if you must go today, take Jonathan with you and wrap up in your warmest cloak. <sighs> the snow is deep and the wind is blowing heavily. No, I've, I've looked in the boy's room and Jonathan isn't there. I thought he must be milking. I've seen neither hide nor hair of him. The boy is moody lately. Well, let me go to the mill, Lydia, instead of you. It's a nasty-looking day. No, John, I want to go. 
It's my fault not paying better attention to the stores. Now, don't you go getting moody too, Lydia. <sighs> Where's your sunny smile that's always with you? Please, please try to understand, John. This is something I must do myself. It's important to me. All right, Lydia. <laughs> I know when your mind is made up, there's no stopping you. Mistress Lydia Dara, I have a pass to go to the miller at Frankfurt to get some flour. All right, madam, my compliments. It's a hard day to be out in the weather. Here, here is my sack. Will you have it filled when I return? That I will, Mistress Dara. You're not walking further in this weather. Oh, I, I have a friend whose life is hanging in the balance. I must go and see him before it is too late. God go with you. Yes, Yes, I, I think he will. Halt, mistress. Did you wish to see someone? Your sentry back there told me I would find the officer in charge here. Lieutenant Colonel Craig, mistress? Yes. Will you tell him Mistress Dara Philadelphia is here? I would like to have a word with him. Certainly, Mistress. Excuse me. Colonel Craig, sir. Yes, Bartle. Why, Mistress Lydia. Yes. Please come inside. Oh, thank you. You must be near freezing with the cold. Corporal, fetch Mistress Dara a cup of tea from the campfire. I suspect I know why you've come, Mistress Lydia. What? I'm sorry you had to make such a hard trip. You, you know why I've come, Colonel? What, what do you mean? Aren't you looking for Jonathan? John? Is the child here? He arrived only a few minutes ago. He told me he had your permission to volunteer. I thought the lad looked as if he'd run away. Oh, his father and I have been at our wit's end to know what to do with him. Would you like to see him? Oh, yes. No. Oh, I, I'm forgetting, Colonel. I came on another matter. I, I must think of Jonathan later. This is a matter of utmost urgency... Would you give me your most solemn pledge of secrecy? Why, yes, of course. I, I have an important message for General Washington. You must give it to him yourself. Yes. The adjutant general borrowed one of my chambers for a conference with his officers last night. While they were meeting, I, 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 I was curious because of his extreme secrecy, and I listened at the door. I, I heard him say he had an order from General Howe for tonight. All British troops are to march out tonight That's to attack General Washington's army. A surprise attack? Yes. I cannot tell you, Mistress Lydia, what a great thing you have done. I must get this news to the General without delay. What about Jonathan? Would you like to see him? Oh, yes, of course I would like to see him. But his father and I have done our best and failed somehow. Now I, I must leave him to God. Tell the boy for me that I sent him my... Oh, no. No, don't tell him. No one must know that I have come. I must go home quickly before the, the British suspect anything. God bless you for your courage, Mistress Lydia. I'll do my best to take care of Jonathan. What kept you so long, Lydia? It's nearly dark. Oh, John, my heart is heavy in me. Please do not press me for explanations and excuses. Why, my dear? Is there something wrong that you cannot share with me? Jonathan. Jonathan? I haven't seen the boy all day. I know. I... I received word that he's gone to join the army. What? The army? Yes. Oh, no. Yes, John, my heart breaks to think of his danger, but... I... I have decided not to try to stop him. Oh, my dear. It's hard. It's especially hard for you. No matter what we think, John, we cannot go against the boy's own conscience. Yes, I suppose that's right. But he's so young. <laughs> In some ways, John, I think he is older than we are. Children start building from the highest point their parents have achieved. Listen. Look. Look there, out the window. What? The troops are moving. The troops? Oh, oh excuse me, John. 
I, I must get the supper ready and start my baking. Well, we are on our way, General Howell. Yes. The men do not know where they are heading. No, but they all understand the need for quiet and secrecy. Good. We are fortunate not to be on foot in this snowy road. Yes, the ruts and drifts are deep. But the snow will serve us well. Except for it, the night is black. I would prefer total blackness to cover our march. But Washington will never expect us on a night like this. <laughs> he probably thinks us asleep in Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, we must be nearly there. Yes. Uh, wait. Halt! I think I see a scout approaching. General Howe! General Howe! Turn back, sir! Turn back! Turn back? Why, what do you mean, man? Out with it! We've been betrayed, sir. General Washington's troops are armed to a man and on the watch. The cannon are mounted and they're ready at every point to meet an attack. No, by all heaven. You blundering fool. I told you to preserve the utmost secrecy on our plans. I, I did, sir. I, I'm sorry, sir. I, I cannot imagine what went sorry. wrong. Sorry, idiot. All our trouble has been in vain. Order the troops to turn back. Yes, sir. Fox, again, has outwitted the hounds. Yes? Good morning, Mr. Starrer. The Adjutant General would like to see you. Oh, all right. I'll, I'll go with you. Let me fetch my cloak. David, tell your father I have an errand in the town. What is it, Mother? May I go with you? Oh, no, son. Tell your father as I told you. And mind you be good to Timothy while I'm gone. I'm ready. <laughs> Mistress Dara, do come in. Do you uh, wish to use my house again, sir? Shh. I must make sure we aren't overheard. Come over by the window, Mistress Dara. You look tired. Oh, I am tired, sir. Oh, I have had family trouble since I spoke with you last. My regrets, madam. It's about your family that I wanted to inquire. Yes? That night in your chamber, Mistress Dara. I didn't tell you then, but that was an important meeting with the officers of the army. Are you quite certain no member of your family was about while we were there? We all retired early, as you requested. Strange. Very strange. Tell me once again. I know you to be a God-fearing woman. That you would not lie. No. No, I tell you truly. My husband and three boys and I retired to our own chambers. I said good night to all of them at eight o'clock. I know that you were asleep, for I had to knock three times before you heard me. Yet it is certain that we were betrayed. Marching out to surprise General Washington at White Marsh, we found him prepared at every point to meet attack. And we were compelled to march back like a parcel of fools. I'm entirely at a loss to explain it. Nor can I explain it, General. Will you have need of my house again? What? No. No, thank you. Lieutenant! Lieutenant, escort Mistress Dara home. Good day, madam. Lydia, Lydia, my dear. What is it? Are you all right? Oh, yes, yes, John, I'm all right. Except my heart is heavy for Jonathan. I cannot help thinking that he, he must be cold. Well, then rejoice, my dear. What? He's drinking tea and warming his feet in the kitchen this very minute. Here? Jonathan? Come and see for yourself. Oh, oh my son. <laughs> yes, mother. The general sent me. General Washington! But why? And how did you get through the lines? I sneaked through last night. No one challenged me. <laughs> the Redcoats must have been at home in bed. Oh, indeed. The General sent you a letter, Mother. I don't know what it says, but he told me to tell you that he was proud to be able to return your message fittingly. Return your message, Lydia. Jonathan, give the letter to your father. Would you read it, John? Headquarters, 
White Marsh, December 4, 1777. To Mistress Lydia Dara at Philadelphia. Dear Madam, for the many lives you have saved tonight, I am glad to be able to give back one to you. The boy has the courage of his mother, but when he is older, if God has not yet granted us victory, I will welcome him as a volunteer. If it were in my power to give you the highest decoration, madam, I would do so. But I know that a mother's son is the most precious jewel she could have. You have earned my thanks, madam, and the gratitude of all the troops for your bravery in warning us of General Howe's intention. A surprise attack at this time could have ruined us and lost forever the independence for which we fight. For this act, the name of Lydia Dara will be remembered as long as these colonies endure. I am, madam, your grateful and obedient servant, G. Washington. Mother, you, 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 you're wonderful. Lydia, Lydia. Indeed, it was brave of you, but I, I never thought you could deceive us so. And to take part in war. Well, I thought your faith would prevent you from such a deed. Oh, John, my dear. I, I sought not violence, but to put a stop to violence. I doubt not that war is evil in the sight of God, but... When evil is at work, how can one remain idle? Oh, I know your thoughts, and they were mine. Until I had to choose between acting or letting the army be destroyed. Oh, a woman must do what she can to help when her country is in danger. Thank you, Miriam Wolf, for a very stirring portrayal. And now here is an important message to the young women of America. You have just heard an interesting story about one of America's gallant women in the past. If you are between 18 and 34 and a high school graduate, join the gallant women of the present. You will find that job opportunities in the WAC, Women's Army Corps, and in the WAF, Women in the Air Force, are now virtually unlimited. Visit your local recruiting headquarters and learn about the more than 100 different assignments now offered the young women of America. Talk to your recruiting sergeant. Get the facts and enlist today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This program featured Miriam Wolf as Lydia Darrow. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>